And we're live. Yeah. Mary, I'm an investigative journalist, and I'm joined today with a special guest on the second year anniversary of George Floyd's death, May 25th, 2022. I have the pleasure of speaking with Maurice Lester Hall, and we will be clearing things up for the record and exposing some shenanigans. Are you with me, Maurice? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't see you. Let's see. There you are. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Want to make sure that everything is working. Dylan, if you can give me a um, thumbs up. I want to thank Dylan and Brooke for helping me get this going. And we will be showing you some clips as we move through this interview to illustrate some of the points that Maurice would like to make. Welcome, Maurice. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. <laughs> how you doing? All right. You can hear me, Maurice? I hear you very well. Okay. So would you like to introduce yourself? I yes. think that most people know that you and George were very good friends and that you were with him the day that he died. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I'm Maurice Lester Hall, known as Reese. Big Floyd and I were very good friends. Um, I'm only here today because this brother, I lost that on this day. I lost a brother as well. And um, by him saying, Reese, I love you, I believe he wanted me to know that he appreciated my time with him and letting me know that, you know, I'm not with the media or the system or what they paint me black and white as. So Maurice, we can start at the beginning. We I have that clip uh, pulled up, but we can get to that a little bit later. I did get the, the clip of um, how this all started with Thomas Lane, and I can play things on silent, and then you can speak to me. So let me see if I can share the screen. Okay. So can you see my screen? I cannot. You cannot. Okay. Can you see Should it I now? go back to live stream? Go on the restream. Stay there. Restream. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Do you see? Do you see the street? I do. Okay. So I'm gonna play it. This is Thomas Lane arriving. <laughs> and, right. Uh, I won't play the sound unless you want me to play the sound. This yeah, is play the sound. Why not? Well, I, I wanted to make sure we hear you. All right. So just to point to the audience that um, the manager did not bother to come out to the car himself and... Um, we were told that he wasn't even in the store, but here he is. With the counterfeit 20. Yeah. And he bothered to tell the cops where you guys were. Can you guys hear it? I can't hear that. It's very low. But I wanted to show, let's see. Is this better? Yeah, I got it. This is the whole point. Yeah, you can talk. We don't need the, the, the sound. And I could pause it. Okay. Pause it right there. Go back. Pause it back. Go back right quick. Pause it right there. No, not that far. Pause it when you see the counterfeit money on my side. We're going to make that clear. Okay. Let's make that clear. Hold on. All right. Okay. So it was said that in one of the testimonies of the young guy that he kept my counterfeit 20. As you can see, this is my counterfeit 20 where I went to the car before Floyd and this other young lady and examined the 20, ripped it up and threw it on the ground right here. 
Okay, so this was a 20 that was in your possession? No, that's the 20 that Floyd gave me to give him some cigarettes in the store. You see where I come back and bro asked me to buy him some cigarettes because I'm going to the truck and I take a 20 out of his hand. Okay, maybe Again, maybe, maybe we can go to, we should have started, my, my bad, we should start there. So give me a second. Okay, so we have plenty of time for you to, to talk us through this. Um, but to clarify, because people have said that you're the one that gave him right. fake money. And we right. can see on camera that you actually take money from George Floyd. So remember, yeah, yes. At this yeah. point, the manager, I just get $185 of my money because he didn't have a tablet that worked for me. This is our second time at the store this day. The first time I left $185 and he said he needed some time to work on it. Big Floyd and I, we went up the street, paid some bills, took care of some business and came back. This is our second time back at the store. Right here, Gator, you moved too fast. But anyway, right there, that's when he gave me the 20 and I go try to buy the cigarettes. The man tell me that it looked funny. So I pulled out my money and tell him to pick one. Actually, we didn't we didn't get to that part yet. It will get there. Um, I think he did just give it to me. Hold on. I think that you're coming back in the store. And there you go. So you saw that? You see it? I don't have to see it. It's my story in life. I know what happened. <laughs> okay, so the people, people can see that Maurice is taking a bill from George Floyd. And so saying that the money came from Maurice is inaccurate. And uh, would it be correct to say that the store gave you this change? No, it wouldn't be correct because they didn't okay. give me fake money. They gave me my $185 back. Okay. And if that was correct, I never gave Floyd any money. I don't know where you get this money from. We've been okay. together all day. Bro never had anything like that. If he had it, we would have known. So I, I looped it to show people at home um, that was just you again. So for, for people, people were wondering what you guys were doing in the store for that long. And then maybe you can also clarify that that was the first time that you had met Shawanda Hill. Yes, I already did that. He introduced me to her the second trip at the store and only said he was going to give her a ride home. That's it. Okay. So she did she show, she show up there? She was in the store when he introduced us. Okay. So we'll see that. Uh, soon. This is a, a little bit fast, but let me see. I'm already at the truck by now at this point. Okay. So there's Shawanda. Now, is there anything else that you want to say about this? You, you can ask any questions you want. I'm not. Okay, my question is, let me find, you You had mentioned that you had money on you that day, that you had of course, a lot of That's money. real money I'm playing with. Why would I be in the store playing with fake money? I don't know, Maurice. I just know that there was fake money and uh, right. nobody, the, the, the system, the Secret Service has not even entertained where that money comes from I, I there's no point they trumped that when the man killed floyd it's no point money didn't kill him drugs didn't kill him reese didn't kill him compression of a neck killed him okay but what i'm saying is if all of this happened over a fake 20 why right. isn't anyone taking consideration where that money came from if they really care about this black man's life it's not about the fake money. What's really the matter is a white cop never showed a black man compassion. Never. Neither of four of those officers showed him compassion. 
And it's just proven that racism still lives in America today. Okay, so what do you say to the fact that Keith Ellison went on 60 Minutes after the Derek Chauvin trial and said that this had nothing to do with racism and there no no racism was found? I disagree with him. Why would he do that? That's above me. I don't know. Maybe you paid off. Well, people would argue that Keith Ellison is is very is very corrupt. All right. So um, there was one one other thing that I wanted to show you here. Hold on. Sorry, just bear with me. When when um, the manager comes out, have how, can you establish how long you've known the manager? Because I'm not gonna speak on that. I'm just gonna speak on the fact that I didn't have no counterfeit money, didn't know nothing about it. And the money that I did discover was counterfeit that bro gave me. I ripped it up. I never got a chance to ask bro where it came from because he was murdered. Never. Okay. Is there any way that the store gave you the money? Never. No way the store gave me fake money. Okay. Well, and how about the fact if there was fake money inside the car? Not knowing. Again, once they pulled us out, um, I was out, Big Floyd was out. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So you can't say anything about this gentleman or his gun? I can say what I want to say about him, but that is not that don't pertain to me. He didn't give me no fake money. I know real money from fake money. He gave me back my 185. And my 185 wasn't mixed with no fake money. If that was ever out there, why would he give me a mixture of fake money and not call the police or jam me up about it then, but call the police about a fake 20? It, it don't add up. Use common sense, people. Like, I'm not the bad guy here. Well, uh, in my investigation, I'm trying to find out simply how, how he died. And I was told by someone inside the cup foods that um you tried to buy an ipad with fake cash so well, i just cleared that up that's not true i just told you that's a lie but at the same time we still have no idea where that money came from right well if you just well no they didn't investigate but it damn show sure didn't come from the store to give it to me and again i'm gonna reiterate why would they give me a mixture of fake money and real money and not tell or call the police? But yet they call the police on a fake twenty dollar bill that was passed for some cigarettes. It doesn't make any sense, Maurice, unless At this time I got over seven thousand dollars on me. OK. My money, our money. Like, come on, man, this man know this. What do you mean by our money? Just what I said. It was our money. If y'all got it, he got it. We've been eating that day. We don't keep the score. When I order, he order. It ain't, bro, you want something to eat? No, it's automatic. Okay. All right. Well, it is still an unanswered question because no I'm one- I'm not an investigator. They kill fraud. He can answer that. Only Floyd can answer that, and it's gone with him. Well, Miss, maybe Mr. Adam can answer that as well. well All right, let, let's let's move on. So, let's clear up. You you leave that day. The story goes that you hitchhike back to Houston. It's it's natural that you don't want to get uh, caught by the cops. It's no. natural that George didn't want to get caught by the cops or get arrested or get in trouble with the authorities. So. No. Go That's ahead. Not what it is. We missing a large point. The point is when Floyd was approached by this officer on his side, the fact in America is this rookie cop was already training himself wrong. He's walking across the street saying they're doing a lot of movement in there. With that being said, he's stereotyping us. 
It's a fucking vehicle. Big bro was looking for the key fob. He's a large guy. He's moving around, patting, looking for the key fob. Not one time did he ever look back. The girl say, oh, that go to cops. He still never looked back. He just was continuing looking for a key fob. Once he turns around, it is an automatic weapon drawn in his face. Okay. This should is we what's go to that part? Let's, Yes, let's... you should. He was not high. He was only scared. The man knows we're in the same city and state. They kill Philando Castile and get away. All he's looking at is a killer with a badge. Can you see my screen? No. Can you see my screen, Dylan? No, I can't. Okay. All right. So just fast forward all this. Just get to where he's talking to his coworker. Right here. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is Alexander Kang's camera, so we don't see Thomas Lane tapping on the window with a flashlight and then taking out his gun. So can you tell us? What's yeah, okay. Go back and pause it right there. You can see the fake rip twenty dollar bill at my feet. Right. Right. All right. So that happened as the boys came out to speak. No, that didn't happen as the boys came out to speak. That happened before. Okay. I was in the car before all of them. Okay. Lord and Shawanda, and then it was just only myself. I examined the twenty again. I ripped it and tore it out. I never got a chance to ask, bro, what happened, where it come from. The guys came to my side by accident. They were talking to me. And when I addressed them, I told them, no, I didn't give you a fake from about the bill. That go mine's right there. They said, no, not you, him. I tell them, go on that side then and tell him that. But they never went. They went back in the store. Okay. The trial, during the trial, it was said that George was taking a little snooze and had no. swallowed some Percocet. How the hell they know what he swallowed? I don't know. I'm asking you, Maurice. Well, how he swallow Percocet if they found him in the vehicle? I don't know. I'm just sharing I'm with just, you. Just what getting said. you people to use common sense here. How did they know he swallowed a Percocet when they never even went around there to him? They're on my side and they leave from my side and go towards the store because they was called back from what I was told. They never came on his side. Yeah, and that looked very strange that both times they don't even bother to ask George uh, when he's the one that gave the 20. Why wouldn't they just, here's a 20, leave us alone, it's Memorial Day, and we have better things to do. Or here are the no. cigarettes. So why especially when there isn't even a policy at Cup Foods to call the police. Usually you get a two-year ban. And on top of that, Mahmoud, Mike, says that he knows you. He knows George. So why would he bother to call the cops? Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make sense. Any, any idea why he would do that? I'm not there. Okay, so let's clear up what happened afterwards. We can show the, um, you can clear up the intellectual disability. So you leave for your, for your own reasons and then they, they um, apprehend you. So I'll show you again the screen. 
sorry. Can you see? All right. Okay. So they said that you had the beginnings. This is not it. I apologize. But you were released. Uh, I'll explain. So they apprehended you. The next day they sealed the case. They dropped the charges. And they said that you had the beginnings of intellectual disability. Let me try to find that. So when we spoke the other day, you said, does it look like I have intellectual disabilities? Which I said, no. So do you want to say anything to clear clear up matters in regards yeah, to They might be speaking on, I got a diagnosed from Meneker. So um, by paper, they are right. I'm ADHD and PTH, PTHD certified. Um, I have an 85 page long diagnosed. I did five months in the number one lead psychiatric hospital because of this matter of witnessing Floyd being taken the way he was taken. It has uh, devastated my life in more than one way. And now it's affecting my child and my family. Okay. So from, from here, you get this diagnosis and they let you go the day after you do Good Morning America. You think at this point that you're going to be a key witness. And I'll yeah. show people. This is this is the, the rehab place that you're talking about. So after that diagnosis and the release, do you go to Miniger? I was in Miniger before all that. I did five months in Miniger. At, at what at what point after when i was released after the funeral i checked into this place my family got in touch with them and they allowed me to have that experience what i'm very grateful for okay so let's discuss the uh, attorney and the first attorney and what occurred with her so you get released you believe that you're told that you're going to be a key witness. And I'll look for that um, for that image. This is the attorney. We don't have to say her name, but this was your initial attorney, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we discussed the what she said. I'll read this. After his arrest, he, Maurice, was questioned for hours by a Minnesota state investigator about Floyd's death, not about his warrants. Mr. Hall was then transferred to the Harris County Jail in Houston, and on Tuesday he returned to his home, not the city, after his lawyers fought for his release. Quote, when Mr. Hall's family found us, he had been isolated in jail for 10 hours after being interrogated until 3 a.m., said Ashley McFarlane, who was representing Mr. Hall. This is not how you treat a key witness, especially one that had just seen his friend murdered by police. Even with outstanding warrants, this should not have been, this should not, this should have been done other, another way, sorry. This should have been done another way. Okay, so what do you want to say in regards to that? I agree with her. Okay, so what happened with this attorney? Do you want to say anything about Nothing happened, happened with the happened? attorney. Only thing happened was I didn't turn out to be the key witness, as they said. However, while in Miniger, um, I feel as though by me not receiving the family's blessings by them getting in touch with either myself or my family. And I want to iterate, had it been anybody else, if I am the passenger of this horrific murder that has went worldwide, nationwide and gained attention, I don't care what you want to ask or how you look at it, wouldn't you want to get in touch with me? Especially when your loved one is letting you know, Reese, I love you. 
How? Okay. And now by them not getting in touch with me, this is when I believe everybody else start doing is what they want them to do. And I was thrown under the bus. Okay, so to reiterate, you have this lawyer, you are named as a key witness, but I'm in vinegar and nothing yeah. is going my way. Okay. 150 officers filed for PTSD and workers comp granted it. A week later, the family lawyer filed as he should for the family. They awarded 27 million. Maurice Lester Hall is the passenger, whether they want to accept it or not. I'm there. It has hindered me. I'm professionally diagnosed. It's messed my life up more than one. I can I can show um I can I can explain about the lawsuit. So I just want to recap what you're saying is regardless of what you've done, uh, peddling drugs, regardless, exactly. you were you were with their family member and, and he no is acknowledging me and letting the people know that i'm not a bad friend i'm not the type of guy that these people are portraying me i didn't leave him i didn't give him the counterfeit money however 38 is like the top of a t chicago is the bottom of a t bro being murdered at the bottom of the t i got two squad cars and five policemen between us i do not see him take his last breath had I been on the sidewalk that the world witnessed, it would not be the same script. Believe this. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still want to relate to the people that no one in the Floyd family has ever reached out, says Maurice, to, to have a family. conversation. So you can put yourself in the situation regardless of what you think about the person that spent their last hours with your relative, wouldn't you want to meet or speak to them? So it's a little bit strange that no one in the Floyd family has ever bothered to speak to Maurice. And Up again, until then, you don't owe me nothing. All I ask them is to put respect on my name because I'm not a bad friend and I wasn't effed up with bro. Me and, me and Gator was all right. That's what I called him. Big Floyd, we were all very all right. He loved me. I loved him. Brothers, I lost a brother that day. That's all. I I can play the clip of uh, George saying, Reese, I love you, if you would like. Yes? Maurice? Go ahead. Okay, well, this is difficult to watch. Mama, one of the front pouches. Mama, on my right side back. Mama, mama. Ah, 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 Okay, so obviously we can't guess what George was thinking, but it seems like he knew he was going to die. It's no seems, Mary. He knew and called it. He telling step by step what's going on. The officers that could have saved his life, that could have showed him compassion, failed him. Okay, we well, let's we get my other point of view is. You have ambulance pull up to the scene, check his pulse while the killer is still on the neck. Where do they give you that training? I don't know where they give that training. That doesn't make any sense. It also doesn't make sense that he he's saying things that it seems like he knows he's going to die. So let's clarify. You you stay that that George and Derek, despite working at the same club with ties to the Mexican cartel that they did not know each other. Can you give your your input on that? That's just a coincidence about it's going viral like it did that Minneapolis police patrol the nightclub that Big Floyd 
is a security act. That's it. So they just chalk around to get DWIs. And he's one of the ones that lead that thing. He's never typically just, you know, they had some, they did have an account in, in the club before, but Chauvin didn't recognize Floyd at that time like that. He was an arrogant, above the loud cop, and taunting the crowd, and never showed broke compassion. And this is what we have. Yes, but the media is saying that the head security officer and the head off-duty officer not ever crossing paths seems quite hard to believe. They given never did. They don't know each other like that. They don't remember like that. It's just a blemish. They wouldn't remember him like that. He didn't personally know him and was killing him because he knew him. It wasn't a personal hit. No. Okay. Um. And were you aware that Derek is known as the warlord of Precinct 3? Have you ever heard that? No, but I know they're some assholes. I'm well, still seeing charges from them people. Do you think that it's common to have a um, convicted felon and a off-duty supposed cop work at the same time? at the same place? I just explained that. They wasn't working at the same place. Minneapolis officers shock around the club to catch DWIs at 2 o'clock. After 2 a.m., they urged the crowd Derek around. Worked, Derek worked at El Nuevo Rodeo. He never worked like that. He comes in. He don't work there. Big Floyd and their security people work inside the club. Minneapolis police shock around outside the club. They're not inside. They can come in. We're not going to stop. Him. They're not going to stop him from coming in, but he's not paid to come in and work at that club. Chauvin, not. Big Floyd, you are. Okay. Well, Derek also worked at another club with ties to the Mexican cartel. I don't know, have no idea about any of that. Do you think Maya Santa Maria, the owner of El Nuevo, said that perhaps if Derek had recognized George, then he would have shown him more mercy. Man, that guy, George, was not of color. That's what we are missing. The whole point is racism still exists, and they don't give a damn about us. They prove it. They killed Dante in the middle of his brother's trial. They killed Philando Castillo. George noticed we talk about things like this. Well, it doesn't seem that the Floyd family cares about a black brother being you. So, I mean, I would argue the media doesn't give a shit about black lives and the government is just pretending, making virtue signaling, but doesn't really care about black lives either. That's my, that's my feedback from what I've researched. Do you feel like the government cares about that Black Lives Matter, they care? I'm living it. I'm a living proof. I, I mean, this is my life. It happens to me, and it's affecting me more than one way. I'm in the process of losing my child, firstborn child. I need funding. I need a lawyer. It's in legacy to fight. They have denied the rights of my family because of my criminal record that the system has put on me. Definition of a system. Two or more connected parts of things forming a complex whole. Parole, counties, TDC, DOC, complex so, holes. Maurice, let's go back and explain. So you're in Miniger. You believe you're going to be a key witness at what? Yes, I should. Sorry. So from the, from the outside covering the trial, it looked like, oh, Maurice, this guy, has struck a deal with the government and he's going to testify in exchange for some immunity. And then you plead the fifth. I didn't quite understand until you explained to me. It's, that shouldn't have been that complex. I didn't, shouldn't. What had happened to me in Big Floyd, I didn't have to plead no deal or none of that. It trumped what I was going through ever in life. Those two warrants that I had on that sidewalk when I was on the run, one, let's be clear, is from third precinct, the same precinct that cleared, killed Big Floyd. The only reason it was in warrant is because those guys didn't give me a first appearance when they released me for coming into place and someone else telling them that it was their 
ammo. Let's be clear about that. So again, the system. Now I can't go to court, so my other court things goes in the warrant. So this day I'm on the sidewalk. I'm trying to stay under the radar because I have warrants. Okay. That's the only reason I flee and leave, I'm warned. This is a, I understand that they coming. All I want to do is get close to my family. Here in okay. Big Floyd, screaming out for his mama, it just devastated me. You know, people don't know and understand what I go through and how I feel, you know, like, that's an everyday for me with bro for the last two years. Other people giving interviews and telling me Floyd love Reese for real. This is not nothing phony. You well, know, people may I not be a friend. I would never got those blessings. Maurice, people might, might not know the the details. So I'm trying to also can fill it in. So you, it's understandable that a person who has warrants doesn't want to get caught by the cops. I think people have humanity to understand. You leave. And I'm 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 want to relay that at one point they were going to use you as a key witness. You were safe. They weren't going to hang charges over you. I'm trying to understand at what point does that change, and they no longer give a shit about you. Because care. I did never get the family blessings. By them people not reaching out for me, they chasing the money bag. Them people got all the money, so they're gonna do as they say or do as they want them to do. That's the bottom line. So then all of a sudden, did you, did old, char can you explain old charges crept up? You had mentioned that on March, I think some, some charges from right. Redding County. Can, can we, can you talk about that? Again, the system, I'm keeping knee on, been having a knee on my neck since 19. March 19, 2020 is the trial of Big Floyd. Why and how? Redwood County, the same charges I'm facing, as a matter of fact, for tomorrow. Tomorrow, people, I have to go, I'll be at Redwood County for some damn charges that should have been done away with that happened in 2019. 2020, March 19th, these people put a warrant on me. I never knew about it. So all of a sudden, again, I'm recapping, the day that they they announce the key witnesses all of a sudden out of the blue you get an old warrant or sorry charge during the trial of big floods yes how ironic right and again i don't have any kind of support the family never turned to try to reach out and that's what happens why is it that other people like that girl Darna Darnella, she's I raised seven hundred. Well, why is she raised seven hundred thousand dollars? You're his best friend. You're in the car. And I'm this the passenger. I'm all over the news this morning, whether they want to respect it or have it or not. Every time they run this, I'm gonna come up two to three times a year. I should never be in this position. Never. Well, do you and have I don't any, want that any nobody again? I got a lawsuit. Sorry. I don't want anything from no one. I have a lawsuit. If anybody want to do something, do it for my mother that's elderly, that's still paying her bills and trying to go to work. They got my 18-month-old daughter down there while I fight for her brother. So you have two children and the system is trying to take your my boy. Oldest son, my oldest my three-year-old, firstborn child. That's right. It's in legacy. And these people said they're not offering my family transfer or legal custody because of my criminal record which is some BS and I need a lawyer. I I believe in rehabilitation. I believe that mm -hmm. it is very difficult to get over addiction and that we should show our humanity. And if we really say that we care about Black Lives Matter, then we can show some, some mercy and forgiveness. So- mm -hmm. I thank the Lord that I'm good today. I'm fighting my demons. People can say what they want to say. I'm good. I um, understand this platform. I'm taking it, whether they want to accept it or not. And I'm here. It happened to me. It's my story. So, what would you what would you like, Maurice? If you could, if you could get the system to listen to you or to really care about your life, your black life, 
what what would be a best scenario that you get okay your job? in the beginning when yeah. i was told released from harris county jail that i received the blessings by saying the condolences from the da in minnesota i received her her condolences and was told that my charges would be dealt with and i didn't have to worry about it in the event i went to medicare my family and i to show the world hey by you guys overlooking this this is what i'm doing i don't want to be a junkie i don't want to be a junk but i don't want to be a pillar i don't want to be this guy this thug is 90 year old kitchen charges all this life so i went in a minute to get help to be able to clean my life up while i'm in there that's not what was happening for Maurice Lester. I would not, I, I never became the key witness. I became the scapegoat, a piece of shit friend, somebody that left him. And I never saw, bro, that they take his last breath again. I couldn't have watched that. The riding wouldn't have happened two days later. The bombing would have started right now, right then. Are you, are you aware at all that, uh, while there are a lot of people who are real in the Black Lives Matter, that there is a lot of uh, disruption. And well, I don't know about that, but I do know this. His death became a large money sign. I do understand and know that. Oh, and yeah. a lot of people have taken advantage and a lot of people have gained that definitely don't deserve and definitely for the wrong reasons. Now, I'm not asking nobody for nothing. Only I'm just asking. I have a lawsuit and I qualify for this lawsuit. Again, 150 officers do this before the trial. Let's show ended. that to, to, to the audience because maybe they don't know. And what I doing. have a lawyer that has taken my case pro bono and he needs to be compensated. You know? So, so just to explain to the audience what you're referring to, I'm trying to share the, the screen. Okay, thank you, Dylan. All right, so this is, believe this is July. Okay, so everything goes to hell and there's destruction all over the country. And I will argue to say that a lot of good cops, any good cops that have left, left the force. Um, because it's become just a shitty place to work in Minneapolis. So there's 150 Minneapolis officers that seek disability for PTSD. So what Maurice is saying that meanwhile, he's in an actual rehab center and gets a official professional diagnosis. official diagnosis of PTSD. And yet these officers um, get granted for their PTSD. Meanwhile, five days after this, let's, sorry, give me a sec. Five days after we have the civil suit with good old Benjamin Crump, who I thoroughly believe is a crook and not a good guy. So, um, sorry. And in the end, they were granted $27 million, and this was announced during the jury selection. Uh, it was thought that they, Benjamin Crump and his team, did that on purpose to foil or taint, rather, the Derek Chauvin jury trial. Nonetheless, at the press release, when they announced the $27 million, there were people in the audience who have been victims of police brutality and racism. And they asked, are we going to see any of that money? And the answer is no. So regardless of what you think of this guy, Benjamin Crump Maurice, he's not a good guy. And I would argue he's not really a civil rights lawyer. I think he's an ambulance chasing shyster and is all over any opportunity to make money. Have you ever spoken to Benjamin Crump? Again, the family never got in touch with me or my family. I am the passenger. I am there. I'm the voice of Big Floyd and letting you people know, like, I'm not a bad guy. That's my guy. It wasn't by 
coincidence I was there. We've been rocking for the last two years and the last two months. We damn sure was together every day, you know. So that was our routine, doing things, hooking up and doing what we want to do. So when that day when you went, when was the first time you went to Cup Foods? What what time was it around? I'm not sure. Whatever time, I'm not even sure what time that happened, you know. But that was our second time there within like an hour apart. Like I said, I was there the first time, paid the 185 for a device. They had to do some work on it. Instead of sticking around, Blick for and I, we left, went up the street, couple blocks, paid some bills, bought some shoes, and that's that. Came back and um that's what happened. When when you say what time, the second time um they have you in the store at around 7 30 and the media said that you, Shawanda and George all met coincidentally at Cup Foods. But I know that at least you and him arrived there together, and then Shawanda mm-hmm. was was there. Right. He introduced me to her, like I said, the second time, the second trip in the store, and told me who she was, and he was giving her a ride home. Cool. Okay. I'm so taking care of my business at the counter with someone else. They telling me that the device that I purchase is not going to be able to be sold so that's how i end up with my money back now at, at what point do you know who it was exactly who identified the body of george floyd what do you mean at what point you have to identify the body right he, i don't he know to, okay. he was in ambulance in me i don't know i don't know i wake up to viral the internet going viral my heart dropped to the bottom of my shoe a black man being murdered on 38th in Chicago. I didn't have to look at it because I'm looking for him in the county. I'm getting ready to burn bro out. I flee. I take off. I jump in the car of Shawanda and her daughter, and I jump out by two blocks and run through an alley and get a ride with a mutual friend. Go to the room where him and I was at earlier that day. Lie down. Wake up the next day. The internet going viral. That's all. Okay. Well, well, I'm just the the normal process to identify a body is pre-coronavirus is that you have to get a visit. Well, let me stop you real quick. Everybody's yeah. seen them trying to revive and bring them back, correct? Yes, but he was dead at the scene. We understand it. We know this. We know he was overkilled. I he the man been dead. So, when Lane was in the ambulance with him. Do anybody recognize him trying to tell all the ambulance people, you know what to do now, right? And trying to convince them that he was resisting? Yes, you're asking me, yes. He tells the people in the in the E-17 ambulance that he was resisting. People would think, and Shawanda also said, stop resisting, George. Charles also says, whether he was freaked out, that's very possible he got triggered. But if we look at your behavior, which is very calm and compliant. I have a different reason to be calm. I'm um, on the run at this time, and I have a different identity at this time. I'm trying to stay under the radar. I don't need to be identified. I have two major warrants for but two Marie, gun charges at this anybody time. Anybody who gets caught, whether you're black or blue or whatever, I'm taught the cops find you. Put your hands on the wheel, turn off he the did car. That. He did all of that. Again, he got a 45 automatic in his face. But why didn't he just get in the car? Why didn't he get the uh, why first of all they they cross they go across the street, which is a little bit bizarre. Why not put him in the car that's right there? So they walk him across the street. If he had walked, if he had gone into the car. And not had claustrophobia, that also could have had a different outcome, right? But it was a series of things. And then it it just, obviously, I don't understand why Derek continued to put his knee in that 
area on his neck after the guy clearly had passed out. I don't understand he's that. The law and he's a jerk and he was an arrogant piece of shit. But he also knew he was on camera because he looked straight at Darnell. Again, the, the crowd that was calling him is black. He was taunting them and letting them know. He was the mall. He was taunting them and letting them know. I don't have to do anything you people tell me. I'm the, you know, like... They failed him. They didn't show him no compassion. His colleagues, the people that could have saved his life. So that's that. So are you happy with the federal charges of finding them guilty and Derek getting 22 and a half years? I mean, I'm. it's a start. And so you were listed as a witness for this upcoming trial. So how, I mean, this might be an obvious question. So Let's somebody, be clear. Again, yeah. I want to clear up too. A lot of people think that I wasn't a good friend because I didn't go testify. The state didn't use me for a key witness or a witness at all. Cool. The defense want to use me as a witness, people. Why the hell would I go up there for the defense? I'm not on their side. So that's just common sense. Right. So they drop you as a key witness. For and the defense a called me, meaning Sharp and, and his team. And then obviously you're not going to go defend Derek. So then you play. Or let them try to make me out the scapegoat and ask me all what I was doing with my drugs and what I was there and how he was sleeping and nodding and acting had the typical Big Floyd. He definitely wasn't ODing. He was very aware, aware. He wasn't, you know, none of these things these people try to betray. So, no, I when wasn't going up there for that. Him, when we see him in cup foods, shuffling around, dancing, you're saying that that's just the way George was? That Everybody was know this. He sings, he talk out, he make loud outbursts, and that's what he do. It was late in the evening. Bro been in the yard cleaning up for us to have barbecue. He been playing basketball and he have been ripping me around. That's the Twin City, St. Paul and Minneapolis. We started in St. Paul. Now we're in Minneapolis, just to give you guys an idea, we ripping and running. Yeah, right. I don't know how far St. Paul is from Hennepin County. But also when they left that day, the ambulance it's a straight shot to the hospital from 38th so they ended they parked on 36 and park avenue which is a little bit bizarre because if they really wanted to resusc resuscitate this man they should not have load and go you're supposed to do it at the scene if you every every minute that goes by you lose the chances of reviving. So Chris Martin said that he was dead on when they put him on the gurney. You can hear, or I could hear from the, some footage that I have, a Middle Eastern man probably um, connected to Cup Food says he's dead already. And so whatever happens after the fact, Chris Martin believes that was all for show because he was dead and yet they tried for an hour supposedly to resuscitate him which in a way is also strange because the average time they ever take to resuscitate someone is about 20 minutes so why do they go through all of those optics for people to to make them seem like they're doing the right thing do you follow what i'm saying maybe they was panicking they knew that they had already then they in hot water, you know. Again, the ambulance never should have tried to check his post while Chauvin's still on his neck. They don't train you to do that. So again, he wasn't of color and they didn't show him any compassion. Bottom line. That's what the main thing is today that America I need to understand that police still overexert their power and racism truly exists. That's it. That's all. 
let's not lose focus. That's what his death is about. That's what I'm going to keep re remembering. And that's what I'm going to keep reminding the people. You know, his legacy has to live on. Well, I think it's going to live on um, there. there. I think Joe Biden just uh, passed today. He said something about the George Floyd um, bill. I have to I have to look at it. However, I they opened 38 up. His Sorry? If I was them people had any kind of money, they shouldn't have never opened that block up. They done tainted the area where bro have took his last breath. They done took the whole his whole portrait down and everything. They got 38th and in, 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 in Chicago open up. Didn't they didn't they rename the street after his no, name? No, that's only in Houston. Oh, in Houston. Okay. And so that plaza that was closed for a really long time, that is no. Yeah, that's open up now. That should never have been open. That shit should have been stayed down. The Were way in the matter he lost his life. He was humiliated, humiliated, and um, you know he deserved that that little piece of corner block. You know them folks open that up, and everybody else gone on with their lives. Were you aware, Maurice, that Derek showed up at the hospital? At he was there at at least nine o five. He's seen in the hospital. Did you know that? Nope. Why do you think he would go to the hospital? Panic. Were you, aware that they, were you aware that they were at the scene, the FBI and the BCA and the MPD till three in the morning or five in the morning that it became a crime scene? Again, I am on the run. So once I had the chance to escape that place without being identified, I took it. I don't know any of these things, but a black man was killed on 38th in Chicago last night and Facebook going viral. That's it. The next day, I tried to look for him in Hennepin County and he was not to be found. And I lied and I went to sleep. I woke up to the news and that was that i went to the memorial put his third war post up and Can I you tell us uh, that the attorney suggested for you not to go to the funeral right the first attorney because you changed the attorneys told you not to go to the funeral which seems a little bit effed up on what was the what was the logic that you as a close friend wouldn't go to pay your respect to your homie. Hmm. What was the, her reason to say that to you? Did you, you went, which memorial did you go to? Because George had about four. The one in Houston. And just, just for the record, I mean, my uncle died during that time and uh, we had to go to a Zoom funeral because everything was locked down. So we weren't able to pay our respects for my uncle. Many people weren't able to go and pay their respects. So you went to, you went to one of the memorials? The one in Houston, it's, it actually is my family's church. It's my mother and my, my myself and my sister's home church that he um, they brought his homecoming into, found the praise. And when you were there, was it, was the family there? They didn't they didn't speak to you. Nobody got in touch with me. But I'm asking at that memorial were they there you were there they just didn't you didn't cross paths no one got in touch with me okay all right okay i'm just looking at my questions if there's any anything while i, I look at this oh can you can you set the record straight in regards to because people thought because you were wearing red and because it's blood territory that you possibly could be affiliated with the blood. So if you want to clarify that. 
Yeah, I've never been in the gang, no gang affiliations. However, gangster affiliation and mob ties only, but can't no one say they ever click me in nothing. We don't gang bang, we paper exchange where I was raised. That's it. Okay. But were you aware that there are gangs in that area? Oh, yeah. That's true. That's very true. That's what they do. That's the reason I was getting in and out of there. One of the reasons. Like, I never hung around there. You know, I never, I took care of my business and I get in and out. That's what I was doing. That's the reason I didn't wait for the device to become ready. Instead of waiting, I had him to take us to take care of some more business up the street and come back. That's all. So when you're on the scene, you say several times, ask Mr. Adam about me. So why didn't Mr. Adam come out? Or I know you have to guess, you don't know, but he sends out just, I mean, from my perspective, he sends out these kids and twice and he didn't bother or I mean, they lie and say that the that there's no manager there at that time, but that's not true. But you made a good point to me that he bothered to tell Thomas Lane where you guys were and suddenly emerged. Why wouldn't he come out himself to solve this as opposed to calling the police? And it's also strange to me that they only call the police on George because they don't know who has what and also it's weird because supposedly you and Maurice and George, sorry, are regulars at Cup Foods. So from my perspective, I know you're not an investigator, but I am. There's some fuckery in Cup Foods. I can agree. And maybe you're aware or not that they hired a Jamar Nelson basically to be a BLM liaison because a lot of people wanted to burn out that, that convenience store. And a lot of people don't want them in that neighborhood now, but they don't want to leave. It's a mess, you know, like. So do you have any, any comments on regarding Mr. Adam? Nope. All right. Well, because the store, you know, said that you're the one who had uh, the fake, the fake money. I already money. clarified that. Okay, Maurice. There's no right. way that I had fake money. It don't add up. You know, mine was like you see it clearly on the sidewalk. Well, I I wonder if anyone set you up then. I'm not an investigator. Yeah, but you were there. I mean, you can, you can, you can Again, get. my second time at the store, I'm dealing with real money. The only money that was phony with me is the one bro asked me to get him some cigarettes. Where the money coming from, they killed him. I never got a chance to ask him. So in regards, how about in regards to the fact they said that they found a pill with George Floyd's DNA? Okay. So how do we know there wasn't drugs in his system? Are, 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 you, that there wasn't are, you, are you aware that they threatened the examiner to add asphyxiation that he originally said that if, because he didn't see the video in the beginning. That Look, he, let's be clear. Yeah. Big Floyd and I both use at this time. However, that day he did not use. You can still have drugs if an autopsy has been done in your system after two to three days or wherever it goes. So, bro was not under the influence at that time. He was only scared. Adrenaline was pumping people. It wasn't fentanyl. It wasn't wheat, marijuana, cigarette. None of that killed him. None of it. Well, we see, I mean, if he was on weed, um, we saw him, he crosses the street and takes the toke of a pipe. So I would assume, George, you could see him on camera before the cops arrive, he crosses the street and uh, takes a hit of a pipe. 
And they um, also I, removed that from him in his pockets too, right? So it was a weed. Thomas car. Lane forgot it on top of the car. That's marijuana. Yeah. Hey, I, I uh, I'm 420 friendly. I, I don't have judgment on on grass, um, especially compared to alcohol, which in my opinion is a lot worse. I don't know. So today you're you're clean, you're sober. Thank you, the Lord. Lord. Thank the Lord. And you've said that you have a difficult time finding a job. So the yeah, system that's just because I believe, you know, my name. I'm still in the same city and state up here. So I'm being shown bias. I'm being blackballed. And um, I just was calling out, I need some professional help, you know, and um, I do deserve and have because I'm there and I'm doing everything I possibly can. I've been patient. I've been humble for two years. I've been waiting. And all this got me is a bad name, thrown under the rug, trying to get a scapegoat and trying to get extra charges and whatnot. So I'm just not sitting silent no more. So if there's anybody out there that want to help, they can help my mother. They can help me and my legal fees. And, so um, we were going to put your GoFundMe, GoFundMe, which is crooked and corrupt. But your your found your link is is uh, it's closed. It's no longer active. Okay. So I I, I believe that we included it but it's not it needs to be revived i don't know if there's another another place to send people if they want to contribute i'm not asking that from nobody no more that that's pad all i'm asking for is um to do right by me from what i do just deserve i have a ptsd i'm scarred behind this horrific event and um i'm adhd certified and ptsd severely so I have a lawsuit pending against the state of Minneapolis. That's it. That's all. I don't need anything from no one. Well, it would be nice to have some support to get your child back yeah. to have encouragement from the system to not go back to using or go back to peddling drugs and to actually be rehab rehabilitated and be given an opportunity if people really give a shit about black lives. I agree. And this is why I'm here. They don't give a damn about us. No. Mike told us that years ago. It's all for virtue. All right. So, May, would you have anything to say in regards to the girlfriend, Courtney Ross, that clearly did not like you and said that you've used, you've sold drugs to George before? Yeah, I'm not George's dealer. He's more of her dealer and she's an ex. She's not his girlfriend at that time. He's not dealing with Shorty. That's why he was in a vehicle of someone else's. He was not kicking it with Shorty, only dealing with her with a long handle spoon. And I have tea that will be out in my book. So regardless, she's an ex, but yet she shows up almost every day at this last federal trial, crying almost every day with tons of tissues. So what's what's that about? You know, it's an opportunity. Again, it went viral and she was just maybe deserving Oscar. Who knows? Yeah. It's a lot of fishy shit. But she don't know me like that you know i'm not his dealer i'm his bro we don't keep the score you know he might go, have, may have at one point went through me but never like she's proclaiming you know if she's made some money on this because you, you're the one who informed me that the witnesses were paid witnesses i mean some of these death experts uh, i don't know they make six hundred dollars an hour I mean, th this <laughs> a lot of money. All right. I'm just looking through the questions. Um, just for the record that the fake money that nobody, well, the Secret Service, I'm going to show you, show you. 
the Secret Service um, identified the four bills as fake. I don't know if Dylan, you could you could uh, expand this image so that Maurice or people can see it. So the, I got this through a FOIA request from the Secret Service, and they don't even bother to even guess where this fake money is. They just say that it's fake money, but that's it. How so, could they when the person uh, wherever they obtained it from is murdered? It trumps all that. Fake money, where it came from, all that is not what's the main thing here. That stuff is, they killed that brother. So they, they died with him. Well, it don't matter where the fake him, money if came someone from. someone gave him the fake money, then I don't think that it dies with him. And I think that if people really cared about this guy's life, they would look into things like that. Meanwhile, Again, they might be still investigating it. Again, he can only tell them where it came from. He's no longer with us. You guys just seen where I got my 120 that came from that was fake. I didn't give him anything. He gave me one. Yeah, but possi possibly it was given as part of the change from Cup Foods. Possibly what they changed? What the change? From the iPad. No, it couldn't have. Again, I have $185 of real money. That's my money. I know fake money from, from real money. I gave them real money. He didn't mix my money and give me back no fake money in half. I got real money. And if he did, I was still would have had it. That's how I know he didn't. I didn't give bro no money. Bro gave me money. You just witnessed it. The And the person, I won't say any names, but the person who owns the Mercedes Benz told me that she gave George money. He was supposed to she buy did. barbecue and she's supposed to buy charcoal and fluid for the barbecue that never happened. I assume it never happened. Right, and that's what we were going to be at later that evening that we never made it to. She's right. And why, why didn't he buy anything for the barbecue while he was inside? We don't buy barbecue or anything from Cubs. That's not why we were there. We were there for electronics only. Okay. That's why the only reason I go there is only electronics. I'm buy okay. food and crash volumes from Paris. I, mean, I don't know. So when you had the second attorney, did that person do better by you? Well, for the record, that person was with me before the Florida okay. situations. So this is how she came back around and I trusted her and we're doing what we need to do now. So, so she's still helping you. So tell the audience and me, you're, you're listed as a witness. Do you get to say, I'm not coming? Is that your choice? No, they never use me as a witness. No, the I'm state. talking about the upcoming, the upcoming trial. I'm not going on trial for these people. It's not for the state. It's for the defense. I tell them already, I, they got in touch with me and I told them it's going to be the same draw. I'm pleading the fish so they don't even go through it. Okay. Because there's a, there is, for people who don't know, there's a trial coming up in a month. And um, from my understanding, Thomas Lane has struck a deal so he doesn't have to go through this again. Mm, what was, what's the deal? Is he going to do time? type of deal or oh yeah he's gonna do time let, let me see actually i don't the, the sentencing hasn't happened uh, hasn't all happened. three all of them was convicted in the federal trial but yeah. now he's pled guilty so that he doesn't have to go through this in the state trial mm. so you didn't we didn't know that i just knew they said they pled guilty. So he pled guilty to hey, manslaughter. And uh, I could just share the screen. Oops. 
I'm just I'm just sharing the screen to, to show people. Thank you. Okay. Oops. The CNN. So aiding, he pled guilty to, well, aiding and abetting second degree manslaughter and unintentional murder. In exchange for the guilty plea, oops, prosecutors agreed to dismiss the murder charge. Minnesota attorney Keith Ellison's office said state and defense attorneys jointly recommended the court a sentence of 36 months. What? I'm pleased Thomas Lane has accepted responsibility for his role in Floyd's death, Ellison said. His acknowledgement his acknowledgement he did something wrong as an important step towards healing the wounds of the Floyd family, our community, and the nation. While accountability is not justice, this is a significant moment in this case and a necessary resolution on our continued journey to justice. Uh, he agreed to plead guilty because he faced a mandatory 12-year sentence if he were to be convicted of the murder charge. So he didn't want to risk losing the murder charge, so he decided to plead guilty to manslaughter with a three-year sentence to be released in two years and the murder case dismissed. What? Well, he's a... He's a rookie who was on the first day of his job, and this is his first offense. So I'm assuming you don't think three years is... is. Maurice, he went in the, into the ambulance and literally did chest compressions on George. He also he told his colleague that he don't feel a post, but allowed him to stay on his neck. What do you mean he said he didn't feel a pulse? Run the tape. He on his back. The killer on his neck, he tell him he don't feel a pulse, but he allowed and himself and his colleagues to stay on Floyd back, and he allowed the killer to stay on his neck. Well, from here on out, they're expected to trump their field training officer because they are taught, or they used to be taught, to listen to their superior, in this case, Derek Chauvin, who... Um, they called Sir, and and um, Thomas did say, "I'm." Man, Derek Chauvin wasn't on the scene when Thomas Lane had his automatic weapon drawn on Big Floyd's side. That's right. He was not there yet. So you're saying because of racial um, profiling? Sorry. Racial profiling due to racial profiling that he busted out the gun and that is not protocol. And that set the whole stage. Floyd wasn't high, he was scared. I tell him this, if you can ever get Thomas Lane body cam, he asks me, what's wrong with your friend? I can, I I can get it, I can get it. I just couldn't clip it because it's behind the firewall. I. I I let him know he's nothing. He's a good guy. Big Floyd on the other side of the street, when they cross him and tell him, I'm not that type of guy. Same vocabulary. We are using, yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah, he is a rookie, and he doesn't know why George is acting, as he says, squirrely. Because you got an automatic weapon drawn. Yeah. So we can show it. Hold on. Do they train you to do that? I don't know, Maurice. I. All right. Hold on. Okay, hold on. What do we do? Hold on. Look at this shit. You come to somebody that posed the past to counterfeit, not somebody that robbed the store. Yeah. 
allegedly. Who else in the car? In the frame. Okay, well, when I say let me see your hands, you put your fucking hands up. You got him? Dang, man. Put your hands on top of your head. Hands on top of your head. Hands on top of your head. Step out of the vehicle and step away from me, all right? Step out and face away. Step out and face away. Please don't shoot me. Please, man. I'm not going to shoot you. Step out and face away. I'm going to get out of here, man. Please don't shoot me, man. I just lost my mom, man. Step out and face away. Step out and face away. Please don't shoot me, Mr. Please. Okay, so unfortunately, um, I guess because he's crying and freaking out that that only made things worse for Thomas wondering what's going on because he's not acting at all like you are calm and, and collected. So unfortunately, that, uh, like you says, triggered a um, series of events. But at one point, he is on the ground, and he's calm, and he says to the cops that he didn't know. Uh, I'm going to assume that it's not, I haven't found that George Floyd was ever shot. Is, has he ever been shot? I'm not sure. He hasn't been in two years I've been with him, but um, I do know black. he has a, a past, you know, definitely have a past. And um, I know that I've witnessed him change tremendously. What do you mean? Um, after before his penitentiary time, Big Floyd was not nice, you know. And um, the Floyd that Minneapolis had, that's that's a gentle giant. He definitely changed all the okay, way. People up. can change, and yeah, and that's a living proof. Like for instance, people don't even understand that he's calling out his murder. These people are killing him, and he never did curse them one time. Now, one time did he try to curse the officers, you know, like um, this ex, one of the reasons he wasn't dealing with her, this girl cut not one, not two, but four of his tires, bro, you know, he never done anything, you know, like we make jokes, I'm like, bro, I don't see how you can do that, you know, she would have definitely been hunted, you know, if it was me, but he different you know well unfortunately uh we live in a world where once you become a criminal and you go to jail and you don't know stereotyping well you also are then a product of the system as you know and it's very difficult to get out of that uh right pattern. and that's where i come in they failing me and this is what I need help with. They printed white tees of I Can't Breathe. I need the people to print white tees and free Maurice. Well, I, I, I hope, uh, Maurice, that, that someone in the system takes mercy on you because the system, if someone does rehabilitate themselves, doesn't really give you proper opportunity especially in your case, 
to get out of a pattern uh, where you end up on the street and you end up using again. Uh, I want to also clarify, at one point, the cops came to you and said, they asked you if you could be an informant. And um, I didn't, by reading the report, I wouldn't have known that the gun that they confiscated was your gun or that they said, hey, do this and we'll, we'll, we got your back. So can you clarify that? Yeah, it's can't nobody on this earth, dead or alive, say Reese rolled on them or they doing time for something. I've given them information. Nobody. And I can speak a snitch. Huh? Meaning a snitch, because from the outside, yeah. if I'm reading yeah. the report, I'm like, oh, Maurice is an right. informant. Right. So can't nobody, nobody on this earth can come forward and say that. Also, um, it was my gun. I gave up my shit in return to be let free because of the drugs and the money that they were confiscated from me. However, once they got me down there, they did change. And the officer that told me what he told me on the sidewalk was different. So when they start bullshitting me, I bullshitted them with some common names, Big Black, Poopy Joe, Lil C, Lil B, Big B, you know, red, black, green. Like, well, the, the um, man that you mentioned uh, to them was already in jail. And no, so that's not true. What no? it is, okay. is this is what happened. He's upside down with me for 20,000, 20 band. And that's true. That's where I got mine. It wasn't from him. That's where it was. That's the thing where it came from, you know, like he lost that. That's mine. And that's why I got it, you know. So initially you made let you were gonna help out or participate, and then you stopped returning their messages. So from the cops is point of view or the system's point of view, they could mm -hmm. be fucking with you now and recirculating all those charges because they don't really give a crap about you. Right. And the fact that one of their people is getting booked and they got three others that's getting crowd incriminated and I got a pass because of a system painting a picture of me from 19 having a knee on my neck since 19. 2004, I was released from prison. I done a four year sentence in Texas on a four year sentence. No. Three felonies. Get to Minnesota 10 years later, catch a 30 month sentence. Minnesota unbuckled those felonies, gave me a point and a half on their system, a knee on my neck, a point and a half for three felonies that I already done time for. That's six felonies, six points on their system. It pushed me off the scale. These people try to give me 104 months and tell me if I didn't take it, they're going to put the other three charges on me and take the downward departure. I never heard months in my life. Where I'm from, they go by years. So he tell me 80 months the day of sentencing. I'm in Ramsey County at this time. Ramsey County is known as Tap Out County because they don't feed you and they overcharge for the little snacks that they do have. And I've been in there for three months. However, I end up with 80 damn months. Doing 80 months, that's over seven years. Do five years, that legally classified me as, like the paper said, illiterate, retarded, whatever the hell they want to call it. But yes. I have been classified in definition. I have a professional, I suffer from PTSD and my lifestyle and being shot before by someone I don't even know has caused me to be very hyper vigilant. I do suffer from paranoia. However, I'm dealing with these things and having to do this. Now I am in one of the major things in life with the George Floyd situation that has hindered me for life. I'm scarred. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Maurice. Um I I believe that people can be rehabilitated and that the system the system doesn't really give a shit about black people or drug dealers or drug users, and then you just become a number in and out of jail. And your right. child is taken away from you, and I can totally see your side of the story. 
I personally, like you said yesterday, that you can agree to disagree. I personally have different views based on my research. I wasn't there. And uh, I think there's some fuckery involved that's not coming no out. No doubt. Today. No doubt. No doubt it is. I'm living proof. I shouldn't be in this position for what has happened with me. They ran the news today. My counselor come in or whoever and my teachers and everything and say, man, you all over the news. They can't run and show or have an anniversary or a birthday without seeing Reese. There's no way that these people should have done me the way that they done me. Have you, why haven't you tried? To, I understand you want the family to come out, come reach out to you, but have you ever tried to reach out to the family or tried no. to reach out? No. Is it, is it pride? What, what is it? No, it's not pride. It's respect. It's, it's allowing them to, you know, their, their space and how they feel. If they feel a certain way, then I'm not going to force that, you know? And, well, and how do you know, how, how, do you know how they feel? How do you know how they feel? Are you kidding me right now? I don't, but I do know this. Again, if it was your family member and I'm the last guy or the passenger with your family member and he's taking this worldwide attention, wouldn't you want to get with me and see yes. what really went on or what happened yes. or how he was doing, what yes. he was doing? Yes, and the fact okay. that the Floyd family hasn't is very suspicious to me. Do you have any idea if they've ever reached out to Shawanda? I bet you they reached out to Darnella. I don't know. I don't, you know. That's have you ever spoken to Darnella? No, don't know her. Don't have a reason to. Is there any way um, Alexander Kang, who identifies as black, by the way, he filed a motion early on asking the authorities for right. any any proof of more of sorry George being an informant is there any way that George was an informant I doubt it I don't know but from the Florida I know I I doubt it but I don't know that's I mean it, what would that prove if he was what well, does he do? I don't, Maurice. I believe that there's some uh, cover up inside of Cup Foods. I, I feel, especially now after talking to you, that they possibly uh, set George up or set up because if they had not called, if they had not called 911, they lied about who made the call. They lied about not being there. They weren't, they said that there was no manager who's really an owner at Cup Foods. And they could have avoided this. And then they even admitted that it's not their policy to call the police on fake bills. So something's fucked up there. Something's fucked up. Something doesn't add up there. And before talking to you, I thought that you were involved. Um, mm. So especially also based on what Cup Foods has told me. Had told me that you're a snitch that they got involved in a black versus white bullshit that doesn't involve them. Knowing also Cup Foods' history with the cops. Why do you think there's a camera across the street? It's because Cup Foods has gotten in trouble a shitload of times. They put that camera to keep an eye on Cup Foods. So, I mean, yes, it's in gangland. I don't know what their relationship is with the Bloods, but when I told, I interviewed a police activist of 40 years and I told her did you know that Derek wasn't even supposed to be at work that day he got called they called the backup and then the dispatch called the backup squad 330 then it canceled and then Thao the Asian officer says oh let's go because Thomas because they're they're rookies and this is in gangland and when I told that to the police activist that I interviewed, she said, oh, that's funny because anyone who knows what's going on knows that the cops work with the Bloods. And um, and she told me that Derek was known as the warlord of Precinct 3. And at the end, you see, you see Derek and Charles, who was the black man at the trial that had the white glasses, older man, say, Oh, I know you. 
and he had been there um, two weeks before, or they knew each other, or they knew they knew their faces. So, if if um, Mr. Adam had come out and spoken to you guys personally, if he hadn't called the cops for a twenty dollar bill, because when it first happened, you're like. I could have had a fake 20. Anybody can have a fake 20. Does that mean you're going to lose your life over a 20 in cigarettes? Doesn't make sense. And if we'll never know because Floyd is no longer with us, he may have not known that the money was real, but where he get it from, I don't know. You mean he may have not known that it was fake? Fake, right. And because it's make like you just said, but it's not about the fake money or anything. It's about Chauvin being a dick. That's what we call cops. That's dicks. Like him. You know, overexerting their power. Oh, above the law. And that's just the bottom line. Not showing compassion to somebody of color that's not of their color. So well, in you might say it's conspiratorial, but I wouldn't put it past that there's a possibility that they both worked for directly or indirectly for the Mexican cartel and that they called, they maybe called a hit on George. No maybe. way. I disagree totally. Okay, that's, that's fine. Not even in that lifestyle. I just told you this. He's only around there through me. If anything, it would have been me to hit on. If anybody deserves hit on that like that, I'm the one out there in the streets. Bro ain't messing around no kind of way. He ain't, man, Chang, he ain't doing nothing but just chilling and working. Like maybe everybody knows this for, about Floyd. He maybe worked. working for a club that had ties to the Mexican So country. what? He's not tied to it. He's honestly working. He don't know this. How do you know that? He don't know. He don't, you know, he also was he paying bills where he stayed to his boss man that got real estate. Whether they tied to the mafia, the cartels or nothing, that's beyond him. He not affiliated on that. That's not gonna have anything to do with him. He's just earning a living to his second job, which was security at this club. It's Had no ever, way off. I no. don't Maurice, something, so all I know is just something doesn't add up. And I know that this club is. Um, Listen, the only thing it is, is racism exists. Chauvin was a fucking asshole and he murdered bro from being a dick. Bottom line, he was just turning, the crowd was telling him to stop. And he's showing them because it's predominantly black that I don't give a fuck what y'all say. I'm going to stay on this nigger's head. That's what he was doing. And his colleagues was following suit because they didn't look up him. They lacked to show him any compassion. Nobody to say, hey, yo, I can see his eyes rolling. Won't you get up off his neck? That's compassion. Or right, let's turn him on the side. No, keep him here. All right. You know, no compassion at all. Y'all overthinking this and trying to get it somewhere. It ain't no Maurice Hall in his old lifestyle. It ain't no fucking cut food. It ain't who called. It was Chauvin in his attitude. He already got bodies on him. He already knocked and kicked, and kicked some native teeths out their mouth. He's a super dick and a prick. He's an arrogant asshole behind a badge. He's a super dick. Well, super dick Derek is going to be in jail for a really long time. Right. So. And that's what you do right to him. And it bro, y'all missing the point, man. And that's what his, his that's what this adversary needs to do, that Racism still exists in that police brutality overexert their fucking power to not of color. Push your head in their fucking, excuse my language, but push your head into their um, squad cars and have, tell you to have a nice day if they don't get a conviction or something. You know? Twist your arm and make you uncomfortable and tell you stop resisting when you're trying to get out of an uncomfortable position. Well, at this at the same time, if I'm if I'm if a cop stops me and I am doing all of this, um, no, I don't want to get in the car. No, I don't want to get in the car. I'm only going to get in more trouble. It's not like anyone's going to give a shit about me, um, whether I'm white or brown or black. I don't yes, think it is. It can. is. If you're white, they might put your handcuffs in front of you. Dude, I have a someone here who's pretty white. Uh, he's a hippie. And they just 
sheriffs just beat him up. He, yeah, I saw I have him a lawyer friend. Where they do a lot of stuff, but that's not what I'm saying. It's predominantly black African American. Do you see any black cops killing white folks? One, a Somalian killed a white lady up here accidentally. One, right. Yeah, well, there is definitely police brutality. There is racism. And that's what his death is. That's what happened. Police overexerting their power. Polices that think they are above the law. It proves it when they investigate him and his wife. They are, don't pay taxes and other things, you know? Like, yeah, and why do they don't pay taxes? Why do they have $90,000 of unaccounted? I'm just saying, because he's arrogant. That's what happens. And no, it's because they're getting up. money from the Mexican car. It's dirty underground money. Um, you don't get ninety thousand dollars unaccounted for from being a cop. Oh, and then you're a real estate agent too in Florida, and you work for two clubs. When the fuck do you have time to be a cop? Something's weird. Like I told you, if he if he was sent to Fort Benning in two thousand and four, that's while he's a cop while he's uh, working at a club and then he gets sent to Fort Benning for eight months in 2004, which is also called the School of the Assassins, which also trains or used to train military personnel in Latin America, which, by the way, is con considered Mexico. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe just it was use common sense. It ain't no hit. You got to be the dumbest criminal or the dumbest murderer in America. You got 900 cameras damn near pointing down you. Broad daylight, 30 people on the sidewalk, and you're going to kill a man right there in front of everybody. That's the dumbest criminal ever. So it wasn't no hit, sweetie. Well, but Maurice, they all thought that George was on drugs. They thought that he it don't had matter not what he was on, if he was or not. They thought at least at least Lane and Kang thought that he was experiencing excited delirium because of his behavior. Okay, they never got a chance to calm him down. They lacked in their training. First of all, police overexert their power. Had they come down and tried to calm him down like they supposed to be trained to do, this wouldn't be. He was already handcuffed. He wasn't jerking and pulling. He wasn't trying to run. Like, just y'all yeah, back up I, for a minute, man. Let the man catch his air. I don't think anyone uh, would dispute that after George passed out, there's a complete why did he continue to just sit there and even after the EMT got there, he still continued. And it was only at the end, um, one of the right. guys puts his hand on. Yeah, it already was zoned out. You know? And then they pretended that he was still alive, but he wasn't. And if they also should have resuscitated him on the scene, if they wanted to increase the chances. So on one hand, they say that the crowd did more than the cops but on the other hand they say that the crowd is the reason why they went to 36th and park and for whatever reason took a wrong turn on a straight shot to the hospital so he was already dead but that's neither here or there and the, the officer Wayne riding in the ambulance with him and telling them all that stuff that they was telling them that probably was one of the reasons why they stopped because he's mean? trying to convince them to take up for this, to try to get out this murder now. If he is dead, you know what to do, right? Yeah. I I don't know if I, I don't I don't know if I follow. Explain sorry, explain that again. What do you mean? Don't worry about it. Just run the table and watch him in the ambulance with Lane. Listen to what Lane is saying in the ambulance. Well, he asks about the chest compressions. He started convincing the ambulance. If he is dead, you know what to do, right? You don't remember hearing that? He literally says that? No, I'll go literally back. Literally says that. If he knows he's dead, 
if he's dead, you know what to do. Getting a phone call there, Maurice. All right, well, we've been we've been on for almost two hours. Um, can that stop? Can that stop? You said you don't want to take any questions from anybody from the audience. I don't know if there's even, even questions. No. For what? I was saying if, if people who are watching, if they have any questions. Okay, yeah. there were comments on Rockford. Okay. It, it was comments on what? On a, on, should I go to Rockford and check? Who? It's a platform. One second. I'm um, I'm trying to pull it up, Dylan. Girl, stop calling me. True. Stop calling. I don't have actually the rock fin. Oh, thank I you. Do. Okay. Let's see if there's any questions. Someone says, yeah, well, I can tell you more about the employer um, and this. It's not an employer at Cups Foods. It's someone who pretends to be not there, who um, says that they're a manager, but they forget a little um, detail that they're not just a manager. They're an owner. And uh, yes, cops are dirty as hell. There are definitely lots of crooked cops. And unfortunately, with this whole defunding of police, any good cops are too scared to even be on the force. I, I just interviewed a few weeks ago a retired cop. You, If you want to share, Maurice, um, that you have cops in your family, you're not anti-cops. Hey, definitely, definitely not anti. I have a first first. First of all, I come from, I'm a second generation of a five generation. My first cousin, I think we lost. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. My first cousin just um, retired from an HPD officer. Her two daughters are now HPD officers. So I have two generations of cops in my family. No, we're not anti-cop. Anything else? Do you want to hear uh, the comments or you don't? Yeah, know? sure, let's do it. Okay. Uh, someone says that you're lying about the mm -hmm. money. I, I, I don't know if they heard that you said you had $7,000 on you that day. I'm lying about the money. With, ask them where it came from then. What do you mean? You want the person to ask you? No. Ask them, since I'm lying about the money, where did the money come from? You clearly just saw who gave who the damn money. So them people are ignorant. I don't even want to entertain well, people them. People don't know if before that... There was there. We don't we know. Did you know, Maurice, that in January 2020, I believe January 23rd, that Minneapolis stopped a shipment of eight hundred thousand dollars of one dollar bills that were from China that were no. that were counterfeit. There was a problem. No. Know what? I didn't know that. And there was an it or was, I don't know if is, there was a problem of counterfeit money. I mean, Minneapolis or Hennepin is is there's a lot of there's a lot of fuckery there. It's a lot of crooked stuff. There is a lot of corruption with the cops. There I found three pages of uh, cop names from Minneapolis of um, which will uh, I can share it at a later time of, of cops that have lost their jobs because of different all, all things from prostitution to drug <laughs> drug dealing. Yeah, a cop, a male cop. It don't, it don't surprise me. I mean, that's been going on for years. 
but I want I want to establish to people that I personally do not think that if you're caught if you're a drug dealer or a drug user I don't believe that you should be locked up um I, I think that the system doesn't really give opportunities for I had a job many many years ago when I was living in LA and it I went and I was hanging out with some some uh, Hispanic gang members in uh, as it's it was in Watts anyway it was somewhere in Los Angeles they were young they believed very much in God like they were Catholic so they were like ironing their clothes to go out and they had like guns and drugs and yet a cross and they very much weren't able to get out of that system. They're looking to belong. And so they join a gang and then they get caught up in the system and there's really no rehabilitation or opportunities for them. And so that you get stuck in this cycle of uh, not being able to do anything. I mean, if you're not able to get a job, you Maurice, and you're clean, uh, but yeah. no one's willing to help you, then how are you supposed to get out of this system, right? That's why it's designed the way it is. Yeah, I would argue. That However, that's today's anniversary and me being the passenger, I shall not let it go. Well, that's why, I mean, it, there's some people who are like, oh, this guy just cares about himself. Well, I'm not going to fault you for caring about yourself. How is that? Sorry? How is that? They said mm, he only cared about himself that day, and now he only cares about how others think about him. Huh. Well, I, I would say, well, don't you care? The person who writes that, don't we all care? If, if we're not, if our reputation is sullied and we're not um, able to have community or get a job or make money or take care of our family or you're losing your i mean i i would have i have compassion for you maurice i i understand that the system doesn't make it easy and um instead of like oh well you know drug dealers who cares or drug users fuck them right there. these people are ignorant you know they don't have no idea they haters you know they you know what i've been judged and i'm getting hate just for being in the position i am some people hate me for even being in that position i didn't call for that that day i didn't ask these people to put me on this live platform i don't know bro finna be murdered this day you know so they i understand i'm gonna get hate and you know the reason we're here is just for people like yourself you know the rest of the people if they are ignorant and just want to find fault in reese reese always been a stand-up guy since he jumped off the porch can nobody say i ever did any faulty things like that unless they on some bs you know so i've always been stand up and if, as a matter of fact i'm only had to take it um charges because of me incriminating myself to these officers i'm always telling them you know the truth yeah i was there because i knew it was a ca ci involved when i did shoot this pistol so my dna is on it you know so i ain't worried about folks like that by so me being in that position and in that video that day i got folk that really hate me for that just for that and they so sick they wish they could have been there and it's a damn shame because you know that's just what it is and i understand that so are there any any repercussions maurice to speak to me like mm, the fact that you can talk openly about past I'm, not, I'm not i've been silent for two years waiting on these people to do right by me i don't give a damn whoever next in line and want to do it i'm speaking out and letting them know the truth you know maurice i'll tell all like i ain't worried about myself or nothing else Mo Run, whoever said I was only worried about myself, again, two squad cars and five polices are between us. Bro is being murdered at the bottom of the T. Chicago run like this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm on 38th right here. I cannot see him. I do not know that this is taking place. 
I have two warrants. I'm trying to stay under the radar, Goofy. So that's why you gave a fake name to Peter. Exactly Chen. why. I was a criminal at this time. And those charges have been cleared? I ain't speaking on all that. Well, I'm just saying, are you... If no, you I'm still facing charges as I shouldn't be because of what has happened. You know, I'm still facing charges, but I was told something different in the beginning as the key witness, and this is not how you treat a key witness, and, and as it should be. But while in Menager, to show the world, like, yo, by y'all doing this, I don't want to be this guy. I don't want to be... Bad guy, I'm not that type of guy. Let me go get myself together. While I'm doing something right, the world is doing what you're hearing people say. Oh, he knew that's money. He why, lied. Why he did didn't care about stuff. Did they decide it wouldn't be uh, prudent for them to make you a key witness? Because yeah, because of my record, not. I understand they look at me as a criminal. As a as a, a career criminal, but they again, wanted to also downplay the use of drugs. So it wasn't in their best interest to put you up. Um, well, that's fine. The, the the state did a, a wonderful job getting a conviction. I commend them on that. They didn't have to be. You know, all the defense was trying to do was distract the people and confuse the people with the truth. I would have just got a contempt of court or something up there if I would have been on that because I would have been straight not in compliance with the dude, you know, but that's that. Um, okay, I'm going to see if there's any, if anyone else has any questions, Dylan, I, I've looked at uh, whatever questions are in, at least in, in Rockfin. If not, we will, we will wrap this up. Um, no other comments. Okay. So, My other com my last comment is, well, I want to share something. Do you do you have? Are you familiar with the history of Cup Foods? Do you know that they've well, one Mike was wanted for a sexual. He had a charge of sexual assault, and that they have a history of uh, drugs. It's not about Cup Foods. This is about how I have been I'm treated. Asking you about Cup Foods. I'm asking I don't know you. nothing about them people. I'm not an investigator. No, I didn't know. I, whatever. I don't care. That's not, you know, I care about bro legacy. And the reason his death was this cop overexerting his power and standing on his head for so long. And that racism definitely exists in our time today. That's it. And how I've been treated as the key witness, as the passenger of bro car. And it took this worldwide event. I shouldn't definitely be in this position. That's all. I understand, Maurice. You, you've conveyed that. I know that's the gist of, of why you did this interview. But I'm an investigator. And I've been looking at this for a really long time. And I'm curious to know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nothing about them people with that stuff. I don't know. I mean, okay. well, for the sure, record, I, 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 was, but I don't know. But they can't prove they ain't got nobody can stand up and say this is that again. Mines was common bullshit names from bullshit precinct. They tried to bullshit me, and that's the bottom line. All right. Well, it was I'm my gonna... gun that I gave up on myself again. That's what they got for me. I I understand Derek's role in this, but again, if they didn't call the cops, the store, and if Adam had come out himself to have a conversation, since you say at least 10 times, ask Mr. Adam, if he had come out, this could have been prevented. To a lot of stuff could have been, been prevented. I mean, that's hindsight. A lot of ways, a lot of things. His reasoning for calling the cops, I don't know. I'm not him. His reasoning for having a relationship with me and saying that he know me and we was all right and he still did that, I don't know. That's something you got to get an interview with them people about. Well, when I called Adam and I spoke to him and I said, are you an informant? He said, 
what the fuck are you talking about? And then he said, don't ever call here again. Uh, so they, they did tell me that you were in Cup Foods not too long ago. Yeah. So I guess you're still cool with Mr. Adam? I got business there. I took and got my electronics. Again, this is where I get my electronics on. I don't pay full price for electronics. They have electronics for reasonable prices. I like Apple iPads. I like to upgrade my Apple iPads. You know, I got the newest version of Apple iPad. And I like Apple iPhones and product. I'm an Apple user now. So, so Cup Foods, which is now Pawn Store, by the way, as well, is your place of where it was at that time. And when I went done these business, that's what I was getting. But from the information that we're gaining, I don't think it'd be wise to be around it. I can find other places to get Apple iPads and other things. So well, I'm, just, I'm just sharing what they've told. Sorry. I understand and I'm receiving it. Sorry, I got a I got a call. Um, okay, Maurice, I I am very grateful for your time and for having the courage to um, come with me and to trust me. Um, and I I sincerely I sincerely do hope you get your child back. I'm fighting. I won't let up on that. Me or my family won't. I come from good stock. If they if they see that you're clean and the baby mama is not involved, why wouldn't they want the child with the actual parent as opposed as opposed to? A well, father? they said they collectively said as a team because of my criminal record they won't allow a alpha my family transfer or leave a custody. Had they would done that, I would have still been getting my child, you know. So they. I believe, you know, my name whole weight now. I'm still here and people don't understand the bias and the black ball I go through behind closed doors. And that's type of shit that happens to me behind being the passenger of George Floyd. And it all stems from had I got the blessings of this family, people would have did right by me. Why? Because they are at the sympathy of the family. But I can speak boldly because can't nobody in this world say Big Floyd said I love them on their diabetes, but Maurice left the heart. So people can say what they want to say. I am not the bad friend. I ain't fucked up. Had I been, bro, would have never mentioned that. You know? So. Yeah, so in leaving, what people can leave with is that if you were the George Floyd, fa Floyd family, would you have not wanted to speak to the person or persons who were with your relative that day? And the fact that they never reached out to ask what was on George's mind, what were you doing, what was the situation, is very suspect to me personally. Again, so, ask yourselves if it would have been your family member, had it been my family member, my family and the other way around it'll be different you know so. okay so where you go where do you go from here you're in a program now or are you applying for what what what's the next steps for you before we we conclude any right any now, last I'm just words? It one day at a time and um again i'm just seeking for Um, just respect on my name. That's it. I'm good. I'm going to take care of the rest. But if they don't, they don't hold me that, but I'm good. For the ones that really want to know, you know, just use common sense. It's very simple. Run the tape back. Watch who, Watch what you want to watch and see. If you still find fault, then you're ignorant. Well, when you say run the tape back, I mean, people are seeing things out of sequence. I don't think many people have seen 
excuse me, from beginning to end with all the with all the angles and um well that's something that you that's on them. That's why you and I clarified that today. You bear witness him giving it to me, right? Okay. Yes. I mean, I don't know the I don't know the source of where you got all your money from or where he got all his money from. I don't know where bro got his money from, but I know where my money came from. We don't and, know. And, and, and know. Chris, Chris told me that the 20 looked hella fake, that it was really, it was weird. It was really weird. I don't know why he even accepted it. I know that <laughs> he was. Especially what? if he denied me. He denied me before he, did, he accepted the one from Floyd. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know why why he accepted it, knowing that it looked hella fake. I don't and, know, man. But well, there's still unanswered been. questions here, Maurice. Wow. Okay, Maurice, I I wish you, uh, I God bless you, and uh, I'm sure you and I will will, if you're open to it, stay in touch, and and. Uh, yeah, by all means, we could. If you're open to that, I'd like to stay in touch. Okay, I will. You know what? If I call, thank you. Thank you. So, Dylan, how do we how do we conclude this? Everyone watching, thank you for tuning in. This is um, the second year anniversary of George Floyd's death, and uh, I will continue to look for the truth. Thank you, everyone.